What you cooking, mom? Cut. <laughs> oh, oh, fucking oh, cut. Now I'm gonna you go buy. No, I'm, no, I'm gonna go purchase one. That's the problem. This, this ain't for me. Well, I was like, you no. Know, the background is mom and dad was addicted to crack cocaine. Okay, right. All praises to the Most High. Hi, how are you? I am Doc Holiday, host of the Doc Holiday Show, and you know this show is all about the uplift of black men. Black woman, black teen, black child, black royalty, and I have the honor of being joined by black royalty. My bro, you know, people say bro, but this is my, my, my real brother, Malcolm Holiday. What's up, man? What's up, man? How you doing, brother? Man, how you doing, bro? I'm all as well, man. You know, I wanted to have my brother on here, as I say, because people be seeing me. They see me. They don't, you know, really know the whole history. Everything that I've accomplished, just a whole, you know, you know, a support system. Y'all saw the one about my dad. Now I got... One about my brother. You the second of how many from from moms, bro? You the second of four. Four of us, right? Yes. First of all, man, I know about you, bro. Tell the people about you, man. They know who I'm born in Memphis, Tennessee, so you born in Memphis, Tennessee. But right. this is about you, bro, not about me, man. All right. My name is Malcolm Holiday. I was born and raised in uh, Memphis, Tennessee. I was born. We stayed at 1066 College Street, apartment two, um, and then uh, we eventually ended up moving to Whitehaven when my father came home from the military. He got a a decent job, you know. He was able to purchase other house, you know. So I got you. Hey, you can look at me, bro. That's because you you stand. They gonna they might get scared of you, man. You <laughs> Why they might stand at us like that? Like that? you know what I'm saying? But yeah, hey, hey, we grew up in 42 Sullivan, man, in in, in Whitehaven, as they say, Black Haven, man. As I said, you the, you the second uh, oldest of uh, moms, Ruby Nails children, man. Just how was your childhood, bro? I know I know we had fun, but I, I tell people, man, you know, our our lives are intertwined, but they're also individual because you had your own individual life. So how was it growing up, you know, in the neighborhood? I had one experience, you know what I'm saying? We had a ball, but, you know, your experience could have been different. So how was it growing up where we grew up and having the childhood you had? Well, uh, growing up, it was uh, we had a great childhood, like you said. Uh, we had both of our parents up until uh, mom got called home. Um, and, uh, you know, I enjoyed growing up in that community. We have met a lot of great people along the way. Uh, you know, you had challenging times just like most black families uh, did in those times, even in the present day. Uh, you know, but I really, really enjoyed it. You know, uh, like I say, once again, met some good people, went to school at Rains Haven. From Rains Haven, went to Lanier, you know, and played sports. You know, dad guys in sports at a young age. And talking about sports, man, I try to tell, I tell a lot of people, people that know you and know us, they know you were cold in football. So they, I'd be like, look, I ain't the only one that was cold in football. You was you was extremely good at football, especially playing for the Redskins, man. You and your boy Derrick Hamlin, man. That little, that little backfield, boy. Coach Harris, man. Y'all boys was balling out, man. But just talk about, you know, I guess we, we've uh, – me having my athletic career, mm-hmm. but you being just as good but not getting the notoriety. How, how hard was that for you to kind of deal with? Well, it was hard. Uh, and it really, honestly, it didn't get hard until junior high school. Because the expectations, you set the bar pretty high, really, really high. You know, you was a great man in yourself, but so the bar was set so high for a sport that I had to set. The, the coaches had the expectation of me to perform like you, and uh, that wasn't happening. You know, because you was a running back, and I was I was a running back too, but I was more so focused on defense. So that was my specialty or whatever. So I was was never able to live up to the expectations of 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 them. Of like my brother, you know. So and I, I you know, I'm gonna tell you something. I hated that because mm-hmm. the thing about it, we had two different body types. Yeah. We were two different running backs. Right. You can't ask Malcolm. You you slender like you know Eric Dickerson, even though Eric Dickerson was big. But that was your running style, man. And you was good at it. I mean, smooth cuts, make a cat miss, then outrun cats. That I, I never understood why they would. Well, I'm so much bigger than you. You can't expect you to play like that. You had your own identity, but it's like your identity was tied up with mine and I never thought that was fair for you. Right. And I appreciate that. Yeah, but the coaches, man, they so expected Malcolm Holiday perform like Doc and and then it wasn't happening, you know. But uh, you know, I uh persevered through it, you know, and I did, did my own thing and and uh end up coming out being a decent football player. And like you said, I appreciate you giving me the props saying I was great and good and I appreciate that. And I felt like I was too, but you know, it 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 went it went the way it went, you know. It went the way it went. And like I said, man, this this show is all about showing the people that, you know, all of us have a story, but all of us can persevere through it. You see people that are successful, what you call, what you deem successful. And actually, you know, that's such a subjective word. I've seen 
people who ain't, you know, really got a lot of money be a lot more successful than people with a whole lot of money because they got a peace of mind and they're just good people. But for the sake of this conversation and what we're talking about, you know, all of us have a story. All of us have struggles we've been through, especially as black men and black women, even though I keep telling y'all I hate that term, black man and black woman. But for the sake of the show, that's what we're going to use. Everybody has a story. Now, when moms died, 1985, June 11, 1985, it was tough for me. But as I said, four kids, all of us dealt with it differently and it affected us differently. I know how it affected me. It just made me even more angry, even more frustrated, even more, you know, have a lack of trust. And just that's how I, it, it handled, you know, I, I, it affected me. I'm ready to fight everybody all the time. It doesn't matter. But I understand it affected you differently or it may have affected you differently. So how did that affect you, man? And they don't understand because we're still dealing with it to this day. Well, losing our mother at such a young age, uh, it affected me uh, still to this present day. Um, I remember vividly the last day that I seen her alive. It was on a, if I'm not mistaken, a Tuesday morning. June she 11, she used huh? to always see us off to school, and she kissed me on the cheek and said, I'll see you later. So we normally get out of school around 2.30, 3 o'clock. Ryan's Haven. Yeah. Ryan's Haven Elementary. Went home, uh, and uh, I'm like, Mom, normally get out about 4. She make it home about 4.30. She hadn't made it home yet. So I'm standing in the yard. The neighbor come across the street, Joe. Yeah. And he said, uh, your mom has been in the car accident. How you know? I couldn't tell you. You know, anyway, anyway, mom ended up uh, passing away, and it affected me so much because I was a mama's boy. I was a mama's boy. I love my mother and love her to death, you know. And when mom, dad, you know, dad, I appreciate him for he didn't, he didn't abandon us. He didn't no. put us off on nobody. He raised three young men and a girl, you know, and we know that it's hard now in these times. It was hard. Yeah. More, it was it was harder than mm-hmm. those times too, you know, and um and I just appreciate what he did, but you know we had a, a somewhat of a good support system from uh you know our family members and things of that nature, but uh that's when I started having trust issues. I started having trust yeah, issues at that yeah. age, you know. But still, man, just emotionally, the mm-hmm. emotional toll it, mm-hmm. it took on you because people under if if you've never lost a loved one, especially mm-hmm. a parent, it, I mean it's tough. It gets better. But you never get over it because here I am, 48, and she died in 1985, man. That's 33 years ago. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm almost before my 12th birthday. You you know, a year and a half younger than me. Mm-hmm. But how have you been able to deal with those emotions or have you been able to deal? I mean, I know you have been able to deal mm-hmm. with it, but how do you think that, is, that has affected you as far as your relationships and sometimes because we can come off a little aggressive and a little grunt mm-hmm. and they don't understand where it's coming from. That's that pain, you know, you still feel. Right. Um I still, I've, I've dealt with it pretty much okay, but not really, Marcus, because I still cry right today. When I think of mom right today, I'm having a moment. What makes me feel better, if I cry, I may cry for 15 to 20, 20 seconds or 30 seconds, whatever, I got that out. And I, I feel, instantly I feel better, you know, but it comes and goes, and I'm going to deal with that for the rest of my life, you know. But like you said, people, when they don't understand what you've been through, they have them understand your plight. Uh, and they think you're aggressive or you mean because, you lost someone near and dear to your heart at such a young age, so you kind of misunderstood because you go into a shell, went to a shell, and I somewhat became an introvert, you know, and I start, like I say, I start having trust issues, and it affects me right today, so it affects you in your relationship, your friendship, and sometimes in your kinship, you know, and, and, and so it, it affected me in a, in, a, in a negative way, but in a, in a sense it did make me stronger in, in some ways too, you know. And speaking of a mom, I got some items here too that I brought with me, um, and this is the watch mom had on when she passed. Yeah, I, I remember that. That was mm-hmm. my favorite this watch. Is her wedding band. So this is her it, wedding man. band. Yeah. And this is the watch she had on um, when she uh, passed away. But yeah, so it, it affected me, Marcus. And, uh, you know, and it, 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 it make, caused you to be misunderstood. I'm glad you're on the show because I ain't seen this watch in so long. I'm, I, I mean, I'm going to give it back to you now. But yeah, this is this is her special watch. Little digital, little digital display, man. Yeah. I remember this, man. Yeah. She loved this watch. And, yeah. uh, now, growing up where we grew up, like you said, nice neighborhood, but it was a lot of stuff to get into. Oh, you know, yeah. you know, we had, you know, it is what it is, man. People say, you know, you grow up with killers and robbers and dope boys and burglars and all that. We did it. You know, yeah. we it, they was there. Right. They're best friends. They're good friends. But I know how I maneuvered. Now, I know how God maneuvered me and kept me out of trouble, man, because I was doing some ignorant stuff as well. But, I, you know, the, the robbing and all that, I wasn't doing that. Mm-hmm. But other stupid stuff. But... Me playing football, you know, and you playing football, a lot of times they would, like, you know, remove me from the situations if they getting ready to go do something mm-hmm. serious. But, mm-hmm. you know, uh, but how did you maneuver your way through 
the neighborhood and the community and the and, you know the influences because I can't say the influence because when people say that a lot of times it, it ain't like you, you you hanging around the wrong crowd your ass the wrong crowd too I hear parents say that he's hanging around the wrong crowd no his ass the wrong crowd too because a lot of situations I was the wrong crowd too but thank God that he brought me out of there that I didn't get no serious charges I didn't get killed or anything like that so but how did you maneuver your way to kind of stay out of trouble man well um, I never been a follower. You know, I never been a follower, you know, and I've encountered, we all got friends, like you said, mm-hmm. that, that ran the streets where they robbing, and stealing, and killing, and selling the dope or whatever. And I was able to circumvent that because, um, I had a, I had a, I had a good foundation. My father was my hero. So when I grow when I was growing up, I always wanted to be like my dad. And then I had a, a bigger brother too, that he already paved the way that made it easier for me and gave me a, a gave me somewhat of a, um, uh, come, gave me somewhat of a, um, what's the word I'm looking for? A path to follow. Yeah. You know, and that's where I was able to circumvent the And even my friends, a lot of them was some dealt and some didn't. And I was able to hang around the ones that didn't. Uh, you know, they had the same mindset I, I had. So that would help me, help me uh, circumvent that. Yeah. And it's tough, man, because you have influences, man. Mm-hmm. You know, these are, these are partners, these are friends. You love them. You know, I still love them to this day. There ain't no love. You know, it's, it's, it's all love, even though they did some things that I would never do. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But you still love them, and it's it's easy to get in trouble at that age. And I tell these kids, now nah, ain't nothing changed. It's easy for it's bro, you get in trouble just like this, but dog, it takes forever to get up out of it. Yeah. It takes one second or a half a second. Your ass messed your whole life up. Now trying to get out of it, that's a whole lifetime. So to see you maneuver through that, man, and you know, going to that and Going to college, I ain't gonna need a lot, bro. You didn't go to college right away, but when you went to college, I, I was proud of you, man. Talk about that college experience because you 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 you, you, you saw a legend mm-hmm. and you dealt with a legend. I don't think a lot of people even know you went to school down there. Right. So what happened with that was uh, when I graduated high school, uh, I was I was this is no lie, I was landing the best sleep. This was like June. We graduated like June the sixth, and this was probably like the end of June. And Dad was up. Dad, you get up in the morning. He was in that vacuum, right? I'm in the yeah. bed. I'm. I'm laid up. It's nine o'clock. Yeah, <laughs> for snuggling like, in there. Right. <laughs> but like Marty Martin, for snuggling. Right. <laughs> dad, dad, dad come kick dog. He said, "Boy, this is exactly what he said. Get your ass up. <laughs> you need to get a job. Go down to the post office and fill out an application." I, I, unbeknownst to me, he already had to call his friend. Said, "My son, come, come down there and fill out an application. Make sure you look out after him." I like so I got on up, washed my face, went on down for the application. Now, right, and I'm working at the post office for three years. Worked out. Said, "You know what?" Post office gonna have me permanent, but I messed it up, and I ain't gonna go all the way into that. And so they ended up. He was, hold on, bro. That boy was making that loot I too. Good money, man. He yeah. was making so much loot. I was like, "Pops, give me a job at the post office." But he knew we had different lanes. He, right. He never would do it. Like, right. no. but you know, but, but yeah, boy, that boy was young, making that post office loot. Yeah. Man, I give you boy five dollars. Man, I ain't got no money for you, man. But go ahead, bro. Go ahead. Yeah. So, uh, so I got ended up getting on that work there for three years. They laid me off. Uh, uh, December thirty first, nineteen ninety six was my last uh, day working there. And I was like, well, so what I'm gonna do now? So I said, man, you know what? I want to go to college because I want to get the experience. I knew I was the college type, but I wanted to get the experience so I wouldn't live in regret, right? So I went to the library and rented a book with uh, uh, all HBCUs in it. So I went through there. I went through there looking at the, um, you know, the requirements, you know, what it takes, the ACT score and the GPA yeah. and stuff like that. And I didn't really apply myself in school. I did enough just to pass. When I, if I got a D, I was happy. Yeah. I was like, shoot, I passed. Hold on, and going back, that's <laughs> that, I used to because yo, yo Ryan's Haven report cards. I'd be like, this mother. <laughs> What you celebrating these C's and D's for? <laughs> because you were smart. But like, what you celebrating these C's and D's for? But go ahead, bro. I just wanted to get out of school. Man. I, I, I got to graduate, you. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. I went to school type. I like to hang out with my friends and do hood rat shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, so I said I, I went. I came across Grambling, TSU, Hampton, uh, Miles College. Right? I said, okay. My GPA and my ACT score, I can get in these schools, <laughs> right? So TSU rejected me, right? And well, you I, couldn't get it. You couldn't get in that one. Not right. I get Check that, one. that off the list. I had a party. They let him. I'm like, he he dumb than me. But anyway, <laughs> so uh, I said, oh, you know what? I'm gonna <laughs> go to Grambling State because Uh-oh. I said I'm gonna go to Grambling State because it's Eddie Robinson last year, yeah. and I get to get to meet a legend. So I chose Grambling. They accepted me, man, and that's why I enrolled in Grambling. And I also chose them too because. One of my favorite rappers and artists went there. E-40 went there and Erica Badu. So I said, okay, cool. I can kill three birds with one stone. And I applied and I, and I got accepted. 
Now tell me when you, when you went down there, it was just all just peaches and cream. You know what I'm saying? You need a little money then. <laughs> I need some money. Yeah, I did. I did. So I get down there, right? Yeah. And uh, I, pl- I I enrolled and stuff like that. Like, well, no, we can't enroll you yet because you got to pay this fee. I'm like, okay, what the fee is? The fee was $5. I didn't have a, I didn't have no money in my pocket. This is no lie. I'm in line, bro. I'm in line. I'm like, I don't have any money. It's a girl behind me from Atlanta, Georgia. I can't remember my name. She said, you need, you need some money to get in? I said, yeah. How much you need? I said, I need $5. She said, huh, I'll give you $5. She gave me $5. The young black queen gave me $5, Marcus. I paid them folk that $5. They were able to get in school, man. And I, f- I always feel like I'm forever indebted to that girl. I, I took care of her the rest of the time I was there, you know. And being there, you know, because you, you 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 got the experience, mm-hmm. but you understand once you go to college, they need that loop, man. It, yeah. it, it, I mean, I remember you like, I, I, don't, I ain't got no money to stay down here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. Talk about that process. Yeah, so I didn't have any money. I got there, and you know, when I was going to school, I made it through the first semester, right? And thought about going back six, six semester, semester, but I didn't go. But the first semester I was there, I ended up meeting a young lady that her parents, she was from uh, Gramlin, Louisiana, mm-hmm. and uh, her parents worked at the school. And her father allowed me to do some odd jobs around his house to give me some money to be able to feed myself after hours. You know, the, the cafeteria shut down like three o'clock. <laughs> boy, boy around him, boy, like cooler, yeah. like cooler, cooler Man, on the counter. Yeah. Dead and, and you know, gambling, shooting dice with these guys because I didn't know nobody down there, no one. So I was kind of fending for myself without God, you know, and you know, and, and you know, I, I'd have been. Lost, you know, so it was hard. It was hard, bro. It was hard. Yeah, and, that, and that's the one thing, man. That's that's you know, love. Uh, love pops to you know to life, man. But he's one of those. You, he, he make you be a man. Yeah, I mean, y'all up. saw on the episode. I started tearing up a little bit. He like, boy, get it together, boy. I was like, I pop. <laughs> yeah, you about you the only did. one that put that fear in me, man. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So he, he made us be men and grow up, in which I'm glad he did that. But mm-hmm. I was just proud of you, man, because at that age and coming from. You know, losing your job. I mean, a good paying job. A lot of times people j- jump into depression. Mm-hmm. And I know you got a little depressed and a little mm-hmm. down, but you didn't let that keep you down. No, no, no. Right. So when I came back from college, right, you was staying in the house, right? Yeah. Mark was in there. Malika was there. And then I was there. Because Pops moved out. Moved he said, out. y'all can live here, but yeah. this, this your rent. Right. You this your rent is. breakdown yeah. now. Like, God dang, Pop, yeah. that's kind of high, ain't it? But right. it is what it is, man. Right. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. So I'm so used to, you know. You stand up under your parents' roof or in their house, you not paying nothing. You 42 know? Sullivan Drive. Yes, 42 sir. 42 Sullivan Drive. So my brother, he's Marcus, he's like, man, y'all need to cut the. It was so cold. He was cut, cut the heat on. Cut that damn heat out because the light bill was high. He had to pay. So I, I wasn't working. Malika God, wasn't working. God, God, say that again. You weren't working. Malika wasn't working. Yeah. So I didn't have a job. So it came to the point where dad, he got rid of the house and we had to move out. I had like a month to find somewhere to go and somewhere to work. I didn't have no job. So this is what my daddy did. He he paid my rent up for one month in my apartment. Uh, and one month, right? In the post apartment right there. Boy, yeah, shop, I remember. And I'll share with you. He said, I'm going to pay it for a month and you're on your own. So I'm in the house. No furniture. I mean, I'm like, man, I got to find a job. This is no lie. I have some partners that grew up with. Lebo, Leith Lalica, David, Hot Dog. Them, they worked at Carrier. Like, mm. man, Carrier, huh? Like, cool. First Street Family, baby. First, First Street, Street Family. family First Street Family. He said, call Floyd, man. Floyd can help you get out. Call Floyd. He said, man, look here. Go down to the unemployment. I'm right there popping and cleaning. Holly, this, this lady, I can't think of her name. I can't remember her name right now. And she can help you get out. I went down there. I filled out the little car. She said, well, baby, when they get some, we going to call you. This is no lie. I ain't had no cell phone. I had a house phone, though. And it was like a week and a half before my rent was due. And I said, man, let me go out and find me a job. I said, no, nah, I'm going to take me a little nap. I was about to fall asleep, Mark. This is no lie. I'm about to fall asleep. My phone rang about 9 30 in the morning. Speak to Malcolm Holiday. This is he. You want a job working for Carrie? I said, Yes. Got this job, man. I worked. <laughs> and right before my rent was due, I got me a check to pay my rent, man. And that's, that's and that was God looking out for me. And God and my ancestors looking out for me. No doubt about it, man. And I, you know, and uh, I mean, I know the story. I'm glad you shared this amazing mm-hmm. story. And even going back to 42 Southern, that's how I was. Pops was like, yeah. You know, he gave, he gave us the house, and yeah. you're right. Y'all weren't working. I'm like, man, you better cut that air down and cut them lights off, man. I'm paying for this stuff right mm-hmm. now, and it was tough, but it was still cool because I p- p- most people don't know this because it's still funny to this day because when Pop said he was letting the house go, mm-hmm. I ain't want to leave. Yeah. Man, Pop said, <laughs> Cassie McGowan, ISL Productions, you listen to this too, man. Pop said I cut the lights off in that joint. The lights were off. <laughs> I'm in that mug. Like, I ain't really ain't got nowhere to go. I'm, a, I'm, I'm about to be homeless, dog. Pops cut that lights off. I got an extension cord hooked up. I don't even know how I was standing there. So, Malcolm, you you remember? You probably remember you and Pops coming in there. Y'all moving stuff out, yeah, man. I'm just yeah. looking at y'all like I'm not helping a goddamn thing because I'm about to be homeless. You, your I, feelings. I was in my feelings because I was like, 
Y'all moving stuff out. I'm like, man, I'm about to be homeless in this joint, dog. Yeah. So they finally moved out, but I still stayed in that mud with no electricity, dog. Till the last, till I, I don't even know how long I was there, dog. I was there for a while until I finally had to leave. Right, I mean, I was go. in that joint with no electricity, man, just sleeping in that mud because I didn't want to go. Right, right. See, yeah. No, not not many people know that story. That nigga, he, I mean, he just he just moving stuff. And he he cool. I'm like, man, I, I'm I'm just so thank, thankful that my wife Tasha now she had bought her, her mom in my house. Right, right, right. And her mom, you know, let me move in, but she was like, y'all ain't married, but I ain't. And I'm like, well, it's your house, right, What's right. Up? But you know, Miss Miss War, you had to respect what she said, but just. Cause I think your story and a lot of them, a lot of people didn't know that. Mm-hmm. I know you done persevered through a whole bunch, man, right, because right. You, you got that and mm-hmm. you know bounce back from that, carry it in, you know, to where you are now, man. Mm-hmm. You know your father and hey, man, you want to Memphis finest, bro. So right. talk about that process, uh, uh, rebounding and coming mm-hmm. back then, becoming a the firefighter. Yeah, so uh, when I came back, like I said, uh, let me mention this too. Proud to get on the carrier, I went through a temporary service, and uh, I want to rewind a little bit. Yo, and, go ahead. Uh, you know, it's around tax time, so I got a job you know, sorting these uh, W uh, W uh, two forms out uh, for this, this lawyer office or whatever. And they, when before I got it, like, well, you gotta dress up. I'm like, I'm from the hood, and we don't dress up. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So I had these two big clothes on, which you, I'm gonna tell you now, I had one of your sweaters on, brother. It's all good, brother. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you and little man used to be t- touch your boy up a whole bunch. Yeah. So anyway, so I worked at Carrier for, uh, this 98 rolled around. I had a good friend of mine named Majul Wright. He was like, man, when you come back from college, man, you get on the post office, man, you know, I know the second man in charge. I'm like, cool. And I came back from, I came back from college, worked at Carrier, and went in, he said, man, go, go down and fill out case, fill out case now. I'm like, man, I'm ready, man. He said, man, my man, my guy retired, man. Like, okay, cool. Ain't no, ain't no thing. So I filled up case now. Worked at Carrier for six years. In 2004, Father Department called me and said, look here, you want, you want a job? I'm like, you know what? I work at the Father Department. This is my thinking. All they do is just wash their cars and chill out. <laughs> That's what you thought. That's what yeah. I thought. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, yeah. So, and I ended up getting that job, man, in 1998, July 26, 19, I'm sorry, July 26, 2004. Uh, and that's where I'm at in present day, man. So, yeah, you know, and even getting that job there, I almost lost that job. Yeah, I mean, tell the story, bro. You know what I'm saying? You, you can tell. You say whatever uh, you, <laughs> as much as you want to say. That's on you. Yeah, so I used to drink, you know, and, you know, and you know how. Yeah, well, I did too. I right. did. We always, we have for males and we have strong, strong personalities and, uh, you know, and so, and we have somewhat of a short fuse. We get no, zero it, talent it for. No, somewhat. Yeah, about short this. fuse. Yeah, we got zero time for bullshit. You know, if you if you fake and phony, we're going to tell you that. And that's what it is. But if you're real, we're going to tell you that, too. We're going to love and embrace you. But once you cut cross that line and you and you mess up with us, we cut you off here. Ain't no coming back from that. But anyway, so I go hanging out. Roy Jones Jr. had a fight here. Him and Glenn Jones. And I said, we all we all win. We win. That's, that's you, in, you, in, you, in, you in training academy now, right? Yeah, now. I'm, in, you know, I'm in academy right you, now. You, you can't do you get in no trouble. Go no ahead. trouble, sir. Because right, I don't have a job. I'm, just, I'm, a, yeah. I'm, I'm on I'm probation. Yeah, there. yeah. So I go down there, right? And unbeknownst to me, I got a seat right behind Roy Jones Jr. and the family. So he get punched. He get knocked out. That boy got put to sleep, man. He got put to sleep, man. He got put to sleep. He, he, he got put to sleep. And I'm saying, man, he got your, you got knocked out. Roy Jones Jr. got knocked out. I'm laughing and stuff. And this big dude, big old dude stood up, man. He said, man, what you talking about? I'm like, man, he got knocked out. Man, it's my brother. I said, I don't give a damn who it is. He got his head knocked out. Yeah. Man, start shaking, man, shaking the rail and stuff. I'm laughing at him and stuff like that. Police officer, man, you need to be quiet. I'm like, all right, all right, cool. I'm still laughing, talking crap. Man, dude tried to climb the rail and come in and get me, right? Police officer, man, I told you, be quiet. They handcuffed me, took me in the back. I'm in the back. All I'm thinking about is my career and my job, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm in the back and uh, come walking past me. Ice-T come walking past me. He was like, man, why don't y'all let the black man go, man? They got you, bro. I said, yeah, Ice tell him to let me go, right? And I'm telling you how God worked, man. So I'm sitting there handcuffed. The sheriff's department got me at this time. Mm-hmm. And uh, I hear him talking on the radio. Somebody called a bomb threat in. He said, it's your lucky day. <laughs> he took them cuffs off me and said, you walk that way, you get out of here. Don't you look back. Walked out, and I left, right? I get to the academy the Monday morning. Get called to the office by Chief Frank Cotton. My guy. Your Frank guy. Cotton. Salute, yeah. bro. Your <laughs> guy, too, now. My guy, my guy, too, right? He called me out. He says, anything you want to tell me happened this weekend? I'm like, uh, I'm Eddie Murphy on life. Mm-mm. <laughs> <laughs> not, not a thing. Not a thing. What, <laughs> what, what do you know? <laughs> right. Right. So he said, ain't nothing happened this weekend. I said, I said, I said, I said, no. He said, well, did you get it detained? I said, yeah. So I went and told him the story, right? He said, well, you're going to go home for the day. You come back tomorrow. We're going to have a decision. We're going to keep you a value. I said, okay, cool. 
And as soon as I left the summer, I said, call your brother Marcus. I get in the car, I said, man, what you doing? Nothing, what's going on? Nothing, man. Did he even work? He said, what's going on? Nothing, man. I kind of got in some trouble, man. I was talking to Chief, man. Chief Cotton, man. He going to let me know if they going to let me go tomorrow. He said, Chief Cotton, Cotton. He said, Frank Cotton? He said, yeah. He said, I'm call you right back. I hung up the phone. He called me back. He said, man, look here. When you go in there tomorrow, this is what you do. He said, you, you own up to everything you did. Be humble, be quiet, and uh, and you'll be all right. I'm like, all right, cool. So if it wasn't for my brother having a friend in Frank Cotton, a frat brother, I wouldn't be on the fire department today because I, I messed up that opportunity, and God made it where my brother was able to have a relationship with people in the labor state. Exactly. So I appreciate I'll, that. Yeah, I'll praise it to the most mm-hmm. high. And this, most high. This is how it was when he called me. He was like, man, I, th- I was like, dog. He said, man, Chief Cotton. I was like, Frank Cotton? He was like, yeah. I said, hold on, let me call you right back. So I called Frank. I called Frank. I was like, Chief Cotton, Frank, what up, dog? He's like, what up, bro? I was like, man, my brother just, who's your brother? Malcolm Holiday, Holiday. Man, I don't know why I ain't put two and two together. That's your brother? That motherfucker was out of here. I said, you better fight. He was gone. I said, all right, dog. I said, Frank, what up? He said, man, that mother was, his ass was finna be up out of here. Cutting up down there. I said, dog, I know that's my brother, man. That's the brother. All right, man, I, mean, I, I, I take care of him. I make sure you all right then, man. So I, said, I said, Frank, I appreciate it, man. So it was all love and respect for Frank before then, but much love and respect for Frank. You know, yeah. after that, it's just I'm just God, I'm just glad God, you know, had you call me and, and yeah. he had already set up where well, I had a relationship with, you know, Frank being there because right. the most high I already know all that was gonna happen anyway. So right, right. But it was written. Even with that, man, before we wrap it up, man, you're in the fire department. Not only are you are you there, man, you've 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 succeeded. Mm-hmm. I hear firemen talking about how professional, how good you are, and you know, you got a promotion, man. So you they you you're Lou. Yeah, I'm lieutenant now, man. I appreciate that, man. Yeah, I uh it was a long it was a long, hard drawn out process, but God Mama and the ancestors brought me through it, man. And, uh, you know, it's a challenge, man, but I'm always up for the challenge. We holiday. We built like that. You know what I'm saying? But, you, you, I mean, you're a success story, though. You know, the yeah. persevering to go through things because, yeah. you know, we had challenges. We all went through things as kids, man, especially being, you know, it ain't even just being in Memphis. Just being in the inner city, man. Right, right. We have, we, we have, and I tell people, we have challenges. It's a lot of things, like, we promote the wrong things in our mm-hmm. neighborhood, man. Like, growing up, you know, yeah. they try to do it now. Like, you right. sell dope. Man, that's that's who you want to look after. You, you ain't been to jail. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. All that stuff, man. And not saying anything. I mean, those, those are our friends, but that ain't we we can, we can't keep destroying our community like nah, that. Not at but all. those are the images they give us right. to like, okay, man, too, man, be a dope or, or, or be a thug or smoke, and that ain't what it is, man. So we all had to maneuver that, and that's that's why I tell people all the time, man. Even though our lives are intertwined, the individual because our stories are intertwined. Our lives are individual because we have our own individual experiences, man. Right. And, and piggyback on what you said, dog. They they promote, um, you know, they promote um, drug dealing, drug abuse, and, and and prostitution and things of that nature, man. To our uh, people in our community, and I don't like it, you know, because most of the kids nowadays, man, they're conditioned to look up to the people that they see on social media, on the internet, on television, and things like that, which is the ball players. But there's a lot of different ways you can be successful. I'm I'm a big Big fan of anybody that's an entrepreneur. You got your own business. You're your own boss. I said production, yeah, man. Yeah, I said production, man. And the Doc Holiday Show, these guys here, they have their own business. They have their own um, uh, ideas of what they're trying to do in life. And I think they need to promote more of that, man. You know. And that's what this show is about. Mm-hmm. It's about positive mm-hmm. images. It's about positive influence. Mm-hmm. As I said, man, we, we, we got guys who are in that. We know good friends who have been in that life. Mm-hmm. And right. they in that life, but it's still that number of love and respect, man. Yes, That's sir. one thing about we have to understand as black men and black people, period. We ain't got to always agree because we ain't going to always agree. Right. But we can't find every goddamn thing to argue about right. and right. be mad right. at each other about, man, because we got the whole world against us. Right. It's got to come a point where we got to say, man, we got to start uplifting one another, man, and stop finding damn reasons to fight all the time. Because right. what happens, you say something. Just because I'm going to want to argue. Mm-hmm. They're going to find something wrong with that just so you... We got to stop this, man. Right? Right. You know what I'm saying? I know the Most High is the only one that can stop it, but this platform is for people with stories like you, mm-hmm. positive images to let everybody know, like, look, we all go through something. We all have struggles. We all have had to deal with racism because the racism thing, that's probably the only reason Frank Cotton found out that you was a firefighter. Yeah. Remember? Yeah. That you was down... I mean, that you was down there in trouble. In trouble. Exactly right. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because right. somebody, a white officer was like, hey, he a firefighter. Let me go and ruin it for him. Well, yeah, I know the story. I know the backstory behind it, too, how they end up finding out. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, yeah. 
But you here though. Yeah, I'm you know here what I'm saying? I'm here. I'm Cause here. I think I think Ruben L will be extremely excited for you. Hey man, you know, and and you got and you got you know you got you, you got a nice little baby man. Yeah, a, a gorgeous daughter man. Little, little, little newborn out, yeah. but she ain't no newborn. Right, right. Yeah, smart as damn little girl. I know. I appreciate I'll, it. That's my heart, man. I love her. Every, a, everything, I, every move I make, a decision I make is for her. And I'm gonna tell you now, if y'all ever meet her now, she 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 gon' she she just gon' she gonna stare at you like he was staring at y'all. The camera, he was just gonna look at you like right here. Cause she's trying to figure you out. She, Right. <laughs> yep, that's exactly her. <laughs> don't don't expect no smile now. Not not right away. Now if she smile, that means your spirit must be really good. Yeah. Cause she is fin going to vet you. Yeah, she's gonna judge you off energy. No, no, and she loves being around you. Every time she around, she want to come get my hugs away. Hey man, hey, I know man. That's why I be like, man, your daddy gonna get mad. Quick, stay over there. But you so adorable. Bro. I gotta pick you up and love on you. Then right. hey, I be picking. Hey, Cass, I be picking up, man. I be going, man. He be looking at me like, man. <laughs> what, 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 Emily, I love you, but go on over there to Papa. Go right. on over there to Papa. But right. for real though, man, I know Ruben Nell Holiday, Ruben Nell Bird Holiday from South Memphis. Yeah, South Hamilton, uh, Hamilton. I finna say the damn Tiger Cats. So <laughs> Hamiltonian, the Hamilton, Hamilton Wildcats would be extremely proud of you, man. And that's another thing, man. We talk about the holidays, man. But you know, my mom's a bird, man. Grew up in South Memphis, man. Yes, Lovely woman, man. So. But I know, and I know Pop's proud of you because he talks about you all the time. Man. And I appreciate that. I want to say this too, uh, Marcus. I've told you this before, but I'm going to say it here on this platform here. When I was small, when I was growing up, I wanted to be like my father. See, everybody had heroes. Mm-hmm. Michael Jordan, whoever it was, my hero was my father. I wanted to grow up and be like Bobby Holiday. I want to work at the po- I want to go to the military and work at the po- post office. But when I got older, I said, I don't want to go to the military because I want to work at the post office. So yeah. I accomplished one of the two. And I always, always enjoy hanging around my big brother. Even when I was little. When he wouldn't let me hang around him, this is no lie. I ain't telling y'all this because I'm just on camera. Yeah. I still get goosebumps and chill when I'm in the presence of my brother, talking to my brother, because I've always looked up to him to the present day. Because he's always been a special individual. Can you imagine growing up the oldest child and the only person you got to take a few of somebody picking on you is our cousin Al and Andre Holiday and Tim. Uh, Dave and a few others. Oh yeah, 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 they would come, but you know I couldn't always do that. No, uh-uh, no. So, dude, is you've been strong. You continue to be strong. Now I, I appreciate that, but I always enjoy being in your in your, your company, man. I appreciate it, man. Like you know, it was my job, man. Mm-hmm. I'm fin, I'm fin, I'm fin lay them hands, bro. Mm-hmm. You messing with who? Some fin, fin lay them hands, bro. Simple, yeah. You do what? Cause you, you probably don't even remember a couple of times in the hood. You know, we 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 used to fight each other. Yeah. I mean, not everybody, but it's a couple of cats we had. I, I had to fight. Cause they always run in their mouth, but I know you know if 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 you came in the house upset or something pops. If I'm sleep, mm-hmm. hey Ma, go out there and see what's wrong. Yeah. So it it, it was my duty. It mm-hmm. still is, man. And I'm finna I'm finna throw them hands. Mm-hmm. Y'all messing with who? Oh, you messing with Malcolm, Malika, Michelle? Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm finna throw them hands, man. So exactly. I, I just wanted to protect y'all, bro. You know yeah, what I'm saying? You That's did that too. I remember the time your partner called you. I ain't know what was happening at the school. My brother come out of school. He was like, uh, like man, so who about to fight? Like you. You and Mario, okay, yeah, all right, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Can't call me. I, I, I come out of Lanier. Okay. It's, it's the whole crowd. It's the whole crowd that just gathered. I come out of Lanier. I, I got on the white Puma. Yeah. Cass, I got on the white. He, I got on the white, icy white Puma. I got the white Levi's on to cut across the colors, and I got the white Puma shoes on. It's muddy. It's raining. I come out the door like, oh dang, sure who's gonna fight? You? you? Oh, who wants to fight? That's all I say. Who wants to fight? They said the name. Like, say right. no more. <laughs> March on down to the trails. Beat down. Sure did. And, Beat down. And it was a bottle laying on the ground. You know what I did? Picked up the bottle and wailed on his ass while my brother whooped his ass. Yeah. Beat down. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Beat down. But anyway, man, it, 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 it's, I mean, I'm proud of you. Thank I know you. mom's just proud it. of you, man. Anything else you want to add before we get up out of here? No, man. Just, uh, man, y'all keep doing what you're doing, man. I, uh, I'm proud of him. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to be your little brother, man. I'm happy for you to be my big brother, man. Appreciate you know? it, man. Before we go to this one shot, let's stay right here. Hey, Kat, everybody, look. When you watch this show, you have to like and subscribe because me and Cass is trying to, like I said, man, we ain't making no money. You know what I'm saying? We just, we just in this thing. You know, he, he, he donate his, his expertise and his equipment. I'm donating my expertise and my talent. So it's a grassroots thing, man. So like, and subscribe and hit the notification button. Cause when we get those subscriptions up, then we can go live, you know? So, but we appreciate the support. Appreciate you all watching us but this gonna do it for this edition of the doc holiday show i am doc holiday thank you all for watching until the next time because i ain't gonna say next week i ain't gonna even lie first i was gonna do this show i said we're gonna do one every every week and half of the time like man what about that kind of dumbass 
idea is that this is YouTube. It lives on YouTube. You got to have no premiere. Right. They're going to run home, watch you like this Marty Mart or something. <laughs> right. you, you, Doc Holliday, you ain't Marty Mart. You know what I'm saying? So we appreciate the support. The reception has been overwhelming, overwhelming. So we hope this thing continue to grow. And as I said, man, I'm trying to build me and Cassis and ISF Productions uh, together trying to build the next BET because y'all know BET don't tell our stories no more. They ain't, they ain't giving us what they used to give us. So we got to start controlling our own narrative and pushing positive images of us, about us. So that's going to do it for this edition of the Doc Holliday Show. We appreciate you, the Doc Holiday Show. We appreciate you. I appreciate you. ISF Productions, he appreciates you. His name Cash is McGowan. Look him up. But until next time, holla. Peace. Oh, peace, peace.